Hellblade 2 previews are out, and they just gave us a smorgasbord. Is that the word? Of information. An information buffet, if you will. By way of IGN, Polygon, and GameSpot. We learn more about the visuals. It's a looker. We learn more about the combat. Seems good. And the amazing audio that we remember from the first game. Alas, we also learn some things that are a little bit sad. Yet another 30 FPS game, and our boy Tamim has left the company, the co-founder and creative lead of Hellblade. Does Xbox have a banger on its hands? And what about the future of Ninja Theory? Let's go. Stream during work here, where I give you all sorts of content to stream during your work day. Hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom. Notify when I always have new postings. And give me some comments so you can chat with your boy. But let's talk about Hellblade 2. So Polygon, GameSpot, IGN, they all got this extended preview and probably a lot of other publications where they went up to Cambridge, UK, where Ninja Theory is located, and they sat down and they played some Hellblade. I'm going to go over the combat. I'm going to go over the visuals. I'm going to go over the audio, some of the things that we learned. And then I'm going to also talk about some other things we learned that weren't necessarily in the articles about this game being only 30 FPS and about Tamim, the co-founder of Ninja Theory and the creative director on the original Hellblade, and I believe a little bit on Hellblade 2, is no longer with the company. So at first, let's talk about Hellblade 2. These previews paint a really pretty picture of this game, and if the hour or so that these journalists have played is any indication of the full game, then Xbox is going to have a banger on its hands. So we'll just look at some of these titles. IGN, Hellblade 2 is shaping up to be another beautiful nightmare. I gotta read that dramatic because, I mean, my God, it's dramatic. Hellblade 2 will finally show us what an Unreal Engine 5 game can do. That's from Polygon. And finally, from GameSpot, Sinuous Saga, Hellblade 2 combat looks beautiful and feels badass. God, I feel so tough saying that. But in all seriousness, these are all painting a good picture of the game. And so let's talk about what these people saw. So I'm going to reference some of these articles and I'll paste it up on the screen. So quite a lot has changed since 2017 for Ninja Theory. In 2018, they talk about the acquisition of Microsoft. They talk about how they haven't really grown. But they talk about how the game has become, or the staff, excuse me, has become laser focused on trying to create this huge narrative experience that is very real, very much an art showpiece, if you will. And they have really committed to that crap. So the article does mention about the departure of writer-director to me. And it goes on to say that Hellblade 2 is actually led by three technical artists. One for combat, one for audio, and I believe one for just visuals. It's, it's in the article, so all of them are mentioned, like an art director of some sort. And so this is what they said. In Hellblade 2, Senua's journey, Senua journeys to Iceland on the hunt for Norse slavers who are decimating her community in the northern British Isles. As press toured the studio, Atwell explained that the route of her adventure had been plotted in the real world world, and locations were captured using a mixture of satellite imaging, drone footage, procedural generation, and photogrammetry, if I'm saying that correctly. The team spent weeks on location in Iceland. They actually have some document diaries that go over this, and it talked about how their modeling and everything came together to create this visual. The articles mentioned, and even the video from IGN, really show that this game looks absolutely amazing. If you do go back and watch some of the Hellblade developer diaries, you'll see they're all over Iceland and they're taking all of this photography and what have you. But the big takeaway I had from that is that 
Sinua's journey in the first game was more about her psychosis. It seems this game is really going to be about her dealing with her psychosis, being able to control it, and being able to help other people. So maybe there's more combat in this. In this excuse me. So speaking of combat, they talk about how the game has a one-on-one -on -one kind of mentality when it comes to Senua and her fighting. In the previous game, there were a few opportunities where you did fight two or three people, if I remember correctly, but it seems like this one is going to be very one-on-one. -on -one. And so let's hear about this from the combat director himself, Benoit Mekon, if I said his name correctly. The reason why it's one-on-one -on -one is because we wanted Senua to feel vulnerable. Even though there's only ever one target, it often feels like Senua is surrounded as the camera zooms in for a very close over-the-shoulder perspective, and the whispering advice of the psychosis-created furies bombard Senua. They go on to say as well that the entire combat was mo -capped. So it's not animation rigs or anything of that nature. Everything in this game is mo-capped. They also talk about the puzzles in the game. So if you remember the first game and how it had the puzzles where you have to align things, I'm going to be real with you. I thought they were annoying. They are back and hopefully they're a little bit more fluid. And then finally, the audio on the game is going to be a banger like always there is a developer direct that i've done as well that you can see that in the card where you see them at the studio and there's a audio booth where these these people are walking around a microphone just saying certain things the audio in the first game was absolutely fantastic so i believe that it'll be the same now another thing that came out as well is that the developers themselves said that people don't like long games, and so we can anticipate that Hellblade 2 is going to be a shorter game. So this is my opinion on everything that I read about these three things, the combat, the fidelity, audio, which is also part of the fidelity. I think that Hellblade is going to be an amazing looking game, and it's going to be a very narrative driven journey kind of like the first game where it's almost a walking simulator with a little bit of combat. I think that the combat is going to be cool, but I don't know if we're going to get a whole lot of it. And I think when you leave this game, you're going to come away with just the same opinion you had of the first one, where it's like, man, the visuals in that game blew my mind. The audio in that game blew my mind. I did not go back at any point in Hellblade and say, man, I really want to play that game again because of the combat or because of the traversal. Those were just really part of the destination that led me to the journey, which was seeing a new vista every single time. I hope I'm wrong on that, and I hope that the combat is a big driver in this. I hope it's more action-oriented. This is not going to be God of War. Anybody that's played Hellblade understands that. This is not going to be this open-world, sprawling epic of a game. I think we'll probably get maybe a 10 hour game. If that, it might be five to eight hours. I don't really know. But give me your opinions down in the bottom. Now, let's switch gears. I'm gonna walk around for this because I gotta get this off my beautiful chest. Also during this conversation, it was brought up that this game and all its power and on the most powerful console in the biz, it's still only going to be 30 FPS. That's disheartening because I feel like the last game was held back because of that. Now, they did do a 4K update and it was a little bit better, but at that point, I didn't really want to play it again. I had experienced what the game was about, but I it stinks that it's 30 FPS. Now, the creators have came out and said that was a direction that they wanted to go for. They wanted to make it more cinematic. I'm not going to not play the game because of this, but I just have this feeling it's going to be a little bit more clunky than it should be. They talk about the combat being slow. Maybe they knew this restriction. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm not buying this whole 30 FPS thing where they, they did it for a design decision. I'm not a developer, I don't know, 
But it's disheartening that consoles are still continuing to hold back the 60 FPS stuff. And this isn't just an Xbox thing, this is a console thing. And it's really frustrating that here we are again. Now everybody is up in arms on Twitter and all these platforms that give people a pedestal that frankly shouldn't have them. I, it's not that big of a deal. It's just frustrating because I don't want to have to keep going to my PC to play these games when I've got these $500 boxes that promised they would do that. But what's your feeling on that? Do you think 30 FPS is really that big of a deal? You know, tell me. Tell me how you think. Tell me how you feel. And then finally, the bit of news that is kind of sad to me is the fact that Tamim, one of the co-founders, has left them. I don't know if you guys remember, but back when Xbox went on its first spending spree and Phil comes out at E3 and he's like, we bought Compulsion, we bought this studio, we bought that studio, they mentioned Ninja Theory. Well, Ninja Theory put out a really nice video to explain why they were willing to be purchased. And Tamim himself were ta was talking about how this pushed their studio forward years and how his creativity was going to be taken to another level and he was really the shepherd behind Hellblade he was the one who's coming up with I think it's Project Maya some horror game with um, the Jurgens character that is still playing um, Sinua so I, I don't I don't know if he just took the bag and ran, you know, with Microsoft's money. I don't think this is a situation where Microsoft was invasive and pushing them to do something out of their comfort zone. If you read the articles that I will link down in the bottom about this preview, you will see that Microsoft's Cheddar has been pushing these studios to get bigger and ninja theory has a brand new studio a brand new mocap um, area and everything else because of microsoft and they're using heavily microsoft's research and so i don't know what's going to come out of all that i don't know if he just had enough and he took the bag and ran i'm not really sure um but i hope it was a mutual thing and he's off doing what he wants to do but he's one of the cooler creatives in the business. He was the one who worked with Andy Serkis on um, Odyssey to the West, Heavenly, something like that. And then they had he Heavenly Sword. And he was also around when they did the DMC reboot, which wasn't actually that bad. Um, so this guy has a lot of creativity and he always wears that cool looking hat and he has great hair. So that's kind of a shitty deal. But anyway... That's what I wanted to talk about. So if you made it with me this far, please tell me how you feel about Hellblade. Tell me how you feel about 30 FPS. Tell me how you feel about our boy Tamim. And as always, hit that like and subscribe button on the bottom. And throw me a bunch of comments because I love talking with you. Bye-bye now.